All right, folks, Steve Harris with Low Class Media. I've got an interesting video for you guys today. I did just get done with my last dirt bike race at Diamond Willow, AKA Revs. It was a really tough race, and unfortunately, my GoPro did not capture the race, but I am going to be unboxing today my brand new Suron electric bicycle, dirt bike, depending on which way you look at it. And I know for my current subscribers, they're mostly dirt bike racers. Um, so I'm not sure what you're gonna think about this, but uh, hoping to kind of break into the Suron community a little bit too and show you what this is all about. Just wanna let you guys know, for anybody who's ordered a Suron or is thinking about it, it's going to come FedEx freight, which is a little bit different than the normal shipping that you are used to. Um, it doesn't just arrive as a package on your front doorstep. You actually have to make a delivery appointment um, and kind of set up a time with the delivery driver on the day that it's scheduled for delivery to make sure that you're gonna be around and can sign for the package um, and just be there ready to receive it. In my case, I, may, I had a delivery window that was from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., but it ended up coming at 9.30 in the morning. Um, fortunately, I was able to kind of coordinate with the driver and, and get it delivered. If you see down here, it actually comes on a kind of real skinny pallet um, and then it's uh, boxed here at the top and held on by these bands. So, I, I, you know, the packaging looks pretty good, um, looks pretty robust. And I actually also noticed when I received mine, uh, the box kind of wanted to lean uh, to one way. So, so my garage is kind of downhill. So I'm having the box kind of leaning uphill because I have seen um, in other unboxing videos when people pull this box off their bike falls out onto the ground. So I'm hoping to avoid that. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and pop these bands and uh, open this box. I'm really hoping there's a Suron in here because if there's not, I'm gonna be pissed. All right, folks, before I go any further, uh, whenever you find this uh, in the box, make sure you don't throw it away. It's actually your decals uh, for the bike. Um, you know, you may or may not want to put these on. I'm, I'm still deciding whether I want to or not, depending on if I buy a graphics kit or something like that. But in any case, decals are in here. Don't throw them away. So uh, as you can see here, guys, these are the uh, wheel hub spacers. Um, mine were zip tied to the hub, which is pretty great. Uh, so they didn't go floating around in the box or anything, but just make sure, you know, don't just snap this zip tie and have these fall down and lose them because you're going to need these obviously to put the front wheel on. Whenever you pull the box off the top of the bike, make sure you don't throw this away because you're gonna be using this as a bike stand later uh, if you don't have one. All right, guys, so we've got all the plastic off the bike. Um, one thing I'm gonna do first is take the battery out. It's a little bit top heavy in this crate, uh, so I'm gonna remove that battery just to kind of bring the weight down. I'm actually gonna go ahead and throw this on the charge too, so whenever we're done, we have a fully charged battery. So this is your battery charger here. Uh, go ahead and just plug that into the wall there. Um, and then you're gonna take this lead and you're gonna plug it into uh, the battery right here. So go ahead and just make sure the pins line up uh, with the pins on the battery. Slide that on. You hear the fan kick on and that means you're charging. So right now you notice that the charger is blinking red. When it's fully charged, it will show green. One final thing I wanna show is uh, on this charger, you, you do wanna push it till you get an audible click. Um, it looked like it was already charging uh, when I first plugged it in and it was, but I didn't have it on all the way. So just be careful, don't make the mistake like me. Uh, you know, make sure that you go ahead and push this lead on all the way until uh, it clicks. Another note here, if you see, the battery actually came um, pre-charged about 72%, so 
I can't imagine it'll take very long to reach 100, so that's pretty nice. Um, you know, you might actually be able to, you know, take a little ride on this thing without charging if that's what you want to do. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing charged up so we're ready to go whenever I get this thing assembled. My bike um, obviously did not come with the handlebars installed, uh, but those are right here. So we're going to go ahead and throw those on. If you look up here before we do that, you can see that there are some torque specs um, on top of the, uh, of the handlebar clamps here. And we just wanna make sure that we don't over torque uh, these, these nuts right here, um, just because um, you, know, you might strip them out or, or something like that. Check this out too, yeah, these are the handlebars, like I said, the uh, left side grip is already assembled along with the uh, brake. We're gonna have to throw the front brake on. Uh, as well as the headlight. I've seen in other videos that you want to put this on last because it's going to be in the way as you assemble the uh, handlebars. So we're going to go and start uh, putting the handlebars on. So the Suron does come with tools. They're in one of these boxes, which I'm going to open here in just a second. Um, and I believe you can assemble the whole thing with the tools that they provide. I'm going to go and use my own tools just because they're obviously going to be better. Uh, but you want to start with a four, uh, H4 hex uh, head to uh, open this um, handlebar clamp and we're gonna go ahead and do that down here there's kind of um, a mess of cables so you kind of want to make sure that everything is gonna have enough slack um, you know before you start mounting things up so as you can see here you know the light we gotta have to you know raise it um, we're gonna have to untangle it from the throttle to uh, throttle cable all of this uh, because you want to make sure everything can reach its mounting point. So there, now we know the light can get up there. So I'm going to hang that out of the way. Uh, but we need to um, put the brake, the front brake and the uh, throttle tube on the uh, handlebars before we um, mount the handlebars. So be careful, try not to overstress. Uh, it's a little tight fit. Uh, if you ask me, it kind of makes me a little bit nervous. But uh, we want to make sure, you know, like I said, we slide these um, cables on without them being tangled up. So right there, you said I had to loop the throttle through. And uh, if you look on the throttle here, it says Suron right there. This uh, part of the grip is also going to rest uh, in this part of your hands right there. So um, you're going to want to just slide that on and make sure Suron is kind of facing where the rider uh, is going to sit. So. Really it's gonna be like that. And now you know all the cables clear. Before I torque down these uh, clamps again, I'm gonna make sure my bars are kind of arranged properly side to side. But then if you look at the torque wrench here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and use the torque wrench since I have one. This calls for six. So um, I actually do have a 5.65 setting. So I'm gonna go probably just to uh, the 5.65 setting since six is the max. And I might actually back off just a little bit from there. Uh, just to make sure I'm somewhere in between four and six um, Newton meters. So I'm pretty good side to side with my bars. Again, I'm gonna set the roll later. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque this down. I am, uh, you know, right around the kind of five Newton meter mark with uh, six Newton meters being the max according to the clamp. So go ahead and just torque that down. First, I'm gonna tight snug them up. I'm gonna do that in a kind of crisscross pattern just to make sure I'm not binding one up for the sake of the other. Torqued. Torqued. All right, so the handlebars are on and mounted. Uh, one quick note, actually, before we move on. Um, if you just want to snug these down so they're not moving around uh, before you start mounting the handlebars, I'm gonna start with a throttle tube just to kind of get an idea of the spacing uh, for the brake. Um, but I'm gonna snug that down so we're not having stuff flopping around whenever we're mounting. We can go ahead and uh, roll these forward or backward later once we determine the pitch of our bars. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna snug it down so it's not flopping around. So again, whenever you're mounting the handlebars and the brakes, uh, or sorry, the brake and the throttle, uh, you wanna make sure you first untangle the light I've uh, got everything done there, so I'm going to go ahead and mount the light just to 
um, screws here on the right um, and the left, just a four millimeter uh, hex. Again, these are also a four millimeter hex, just to let you know. I didn't use a torque wrench on these, I just kind of hand tightened them by you know, kind of tightening on the end of my ratchet here until it felt good and snug. Um, one note too, you know, the, the angle of these controls um, is kind of important because if you see here, you know, there's a flat spot on the front of this uh, throttle cable or throttle uh, tube and this does not necessarily clear. So you wanna make sure that you have some clearance here. I might end up pushing the brakes in just a little bit more just to make sure, you know, as the brakes wear out, I actually have uh, some, um, you know, uh, space to work with uh, and I'm not hitting up against the front of the throttle. Let's go ahead and get the uh, headlight mounted and yep, let's get into that. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this axle. We're gonna start preparing to get this off of the stand now that we've got all the handlebars and everything mounted. If you look here on the nut, you'll notice that it has the lock uh, indication um, pointing towards uh, the left hand, you know, this way. So, uh, you know, it's not lefty-loosey, it's gonna be right hand threads. Uh, so what you're gonna use, you can use the supplied eight uh, hex uh, key that they gave you. And remember, it's not righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, it's righty-loosey. So we're gonna have to go this way with the uh, hex key. So now that we got that off, uh, now it'll slide out and we're gonna go ahead and try to do that. So once you have uh, the axle cap, axle cap off, you wanna go ahead and just use your, uh, well actually I'm gonna use my ratchet here uh, because you're gonna wanna loosen this um, a, a little bit more here. Um, this is, uh, this, these are uh, normal threads, so lefty-loosey, righty-tighty on these over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start winding this out a little bit. And I think eventually it's gonna get to a point where, yeah, right there, it no longer um, rotates out. It's, it, the threads are done. So what I'm doing is kind of pulling on the axle as I turn. All right, so we were able to uh, pull the axle out here. Um, it was definitely difficult. Uh, there's a couple, there's a couple things I want to say about this. Actually, I would really like to see a different packaging solution for this. I've noticed, uh, a couple of the people have really had issues, uh, with this packaging again, stripping the threads, not knowing that the reverse threads also just really having a difficult time pulling this out. So a couple things I learned after doing it that you might find useful, uh, because of the weight of the bike pushing down, the axle is actually resting on the bottom of this uh, bore that's drilled through this uh, piece of wood here. So whenever you go to pull it out, it's, it's getting bound up on the bottom side of that, that tube, that bore uh, through this wood. So if you can pull a little weight off of the bike, I had my helper here uh, pull a little uh, weight off the bike so it was more floating um, in place and I was able to kind of use my ratchet and as I spin it, I was able to turn it, turn it out like that. So um, that definitely helped uh, me get it out a lot easier, but I will say that did not uh, occur without difficulty. So I'd like to see a different packaging solution, um, you know, from whoever makes the Suron or I don't think LunaCycle has anything to do with it, the people that I ordered from, but uh, but yeah, that, that would be nice to see a, a different solution. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take the bike out of the crate. I think we're done uh, needing the uh, stability of the crate from now on. And we're gonna go back to this box that we spoke about earlier. We're gonna use this as the bike stand. Now just go ahead and roll, hold the rear brake. Um, make sure your battery box is closed there. You're gonna pull the bike up, off, kind of rest it on there. Use the seat. Oh, well, I guess it's light enough to just do it with your with your strength here okay just get it on the box just like that it's so easy right folks uh, and rest the back wheel on the ground still have the uh, shock uncompressed I'm gonna leave it like that for now uh, we're gonna get into mounting the front wheel uh, here in a second and just wanted to get ready for that installation manual owner's manual battery bumper 
toolkit. Right peg. Front number plate. Some wires. Wiring harness. For this, you really want to uh, make sure that you find this and don't uh, lose it. This is uh, what you're gonna use to uh, kind of program the Suron. There's you know different modes and different things that you can change with respect to the computer and how the uh, bike operates. So definitely uh, locate this and make sure that you put it in a safe place. Uh, mine was in the bag with the number plate and yeah, just make sure that you don't lose this. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and install the uh, battery bumper. It's basically a sticker that's gonna go down here to kind of protect the battery from shock. Um, so first thing you wanna do, maybe get some uh, contact cleaner or uh, some rubbing alcohol. I don't have any contact cleaner actually, so I'm gonna use um, just a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol. You're gonna wanna clean this surface right here. Rubbing alcohol and just kind of clean this up real good. Make sure there's no you know, shipping oil or anything like that that's gotten on the surface. So before you go ahead and install it, make sure you, you place it in there and just kind of look how it fits. It looks like it only fits this way. It doesn't go this way, so you don't want to run the mistake of uh, getting it stuck uh, sideways. So it's going to go long ways here. Um, like I said, just do a little test fit. Now we're going to peel the sticker. Be careful as you place it in here. All right. Well, we're going to go and start putting the front wheel on. Remember again, we have our spacers here and I uh, just want to make sure that we don't lose those. So I'm going to go ahead and clip the zip tie that those are attached to. If you look here, uh, you see those two O-rings here. These are just going to press into the axle. Um, so, you know, they're, they're going to be kind of a, a little bit of annoying thing to deal with as we're putting the front wheel on, but just know that they press fit, they can fall out. So just make sure that they're in when you're putting the wheel on. Another thing to note is on these uh, brake discs, you can kind of feel um, a real, not slippery oil, but a real dry, dry oil on there. We're gonna wanna make sure that we uh, wipe these off with some sort of uh, cleaner before we, uh, before we install the wheel. So just get them nice and clean all the way around. I'm gonna wanna do the back side too. Very clean. Okay, another thing too, this is a good time to, um, you know, take one of these uh, tools that it came with, the toolkit came with, just kind of listen to these spokes. See, that one sounds kind of, uh, kind of low. Checking for loose spokes here. I'm gonna go and get the front wheel on and then go back through this wheel and just make sure to tighten these. For this axle, uh, there's really no grease on it. Uh, that probably contributed to making it difficult to uh, get out of the wood block as well. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of um, just kind of high temp grease. I mean, this is really any grease. I'm sure there's a specific grease that you're supposed to use, but uh, I'm kind of in the mindset that really it all kind of works. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a grease in right here. So before we put the uh, tire on here, if you notice there is a, a yellow retainer that's kind of keeping the uh, pads from, uh, the brake pads from collapsing uh, if you accidentally hit the front brake, which I did hit it earlier. I knew this was in here, so I wasn't really worried about it. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. At this point, just make sure you do not touch the front brake uh, because uh, the pads will collapse and then you'll have to spread the caliper again. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide the wheel up in here. Gonna go ahead and make sure the disc is in that gap for the uh, the brake the uh, brake pads there. All right. All right. So I am taking this Allen key and um, tightening the axle in from this side. These are correct threads, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. This is lefty tidy, righty loosey. Uh, I had to push this axle in pretty hard to get the threads to catch on this side, but they uh, did indeed catch. So right now I'm just tightening this axle down. Take this thing. Go ahead. It's so weird having them tighten down, going to the left. All right, so that's snug for now. Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and release the tension on the front shock. Uh, I guess it's simple as that right there. Just kind of pull off this strap here. 
All right, guys, I will admit I could not figure out how to untangle this thing. So I'm gonna do something that might be ill-advised. I don't think I'm gonna have to use these again. I'm just gonna cut this thing because I fumbled around with it and just could, gotten it, could not get it figured out. So there you go. <laughs> Quite a bit more travel. Uh, watch your face when you do that. Don't get <laughs> blasted in the head. All right, now we're gonna do the back one again. I've actually already fumbled around with it a little bit and could not uh, get it to come loose. Uh, so there's probably a lot of tension on this button here. I'm gonna do the same thing again. Um, probably not the best idea, just to let you know, but I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this thing and try to hold onto it and make sure it doesn't spring away from me. Uh, I'm gonna stay clear of all of this while I do this so it doesn't blast my leg uh, as it comes open, but. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. So here we go. Well, that was very anticlimactic. Also, I'm not sure if you can see it uh, in the video here. It's kind of dark, but um, it looks like the uh, preload adjuster is pretty much all the way bottomed out. Um, so there's not gonna be really any preload uh, in this shock uh, from the factory. So it, it is a little soft when I sit on it. Uh, currently, I, I kind of upped the compression adjustment uh, using the adjuster up here and I was able to get it a little stiffer. Uh, but I'm probably gonna add a little bit of preload uh, to the bike. Um, it's gonna be done by, you know, kind of um, rotating this collar to, to compress this spring. Uh, so it has a little bit more spring compression just from, you know, just sitting here neutral. Okay, didn't wipe down the back side, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure to do that. Oh yeah, that's much better. One other thing you wanna make sure that you do is if you notice on this chain, uh, it comes from the factory, it looks like it was some sort of, I don't know, packing grease or something like that on it. It doesn't look like chain lube to me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean the chain off. Uh, maybe it is lube, maybe it's not, but in any case, just peace of mind here. I'm gonna clean it off with some um, with some chain clean, and then uh, kind of re lube it with some chain lube that I like. Another thing I noticed here when lubing the chain is the chain is pretty tight. Um, it came in pretty high tension, and that's not good uh, because you don't want to run the bike in this way. Uh, because it's going to put too much stress on the, you know, the drive components um, and, you know, they'll wear in different ways depending on whether the chain is too tight or too loose. But too tight uh, is definitely the worst of the extremes to me. So you're going to want to add some slack into the uh, chain here. And you're going to do that by loosening the rear axle um, and that'll allow this uh, axle block here to kind of slide forward and backwards. And then you're going to use this uh, adjustment right here. Uh, to, to add the slack. So essentially you have to um, loosen this lock nut here. Once you have that lock nut, this whole um, you know, bolt, so this chain ax or axle bolt will, will go in and out. Um, so you'll just kind of spin it in. You want it to go in because you want, the, you want the sprocket and the whole wheel to move forward a little bit and that'll add slack in the chain. Um, you're gonna do that on both sides and both sides have this adjustment. You wanna make sure you do it equally on both sides because if you don't, then the, the, the rear wheel will actually be turned. It'll be at an angle um, you know, in, in the axle and the chain won't be tracking straight across the rear sprocket and the front sprocket. So um, they have some markings here down on the bottom to kind of give you a rough estimate of where you're at. So as long as you, um, you know, are kind of in, this, uh, in the same spot based on these markings that you see on the bottom of the um, swing arm here, on both sides, your um, sprocket is gonna be you know, mostly straight. So um, make sure when you're checking that, you actually push on the back of the rear wheel to make sure this axle block is making contact here. Once you're sure that uh, the wheel uh, is indeed straight and it's not on an angle you know, um, side to side, uh, then you can you know, lock this lock nut back down push, you know, make sure you're pushing the wheel, tighten the uh, axle bolt back down, and then you'll have, you know, more slack in your chain. Something that's pretty cool for lubing the chain on these electric bikes is you can kind of just put it on a stand here and uh, make sure you don't get caught uh, up in the wheel here, but you can really just lightly squeeze the throttle here, lube the chain very easily. So we're gonna go both sides 
just watching for that master link to come around twice. I went ahead and hit the O-rings on the left and then the O-rings on the right. So that should be good and lubed. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of wipe off the excess with a paper towel and we're good to go. Now we can take it off the bike stand and put it on the side stand and just kind of check how that works. All right, so now we're gonna put the right side peg on the uh, bike here. You can see the orientation is gonna be like this. So there's two little studs right here. And if you look on this side, you're gonna have these um, kind of holes drilled into the peg mounting surface. Uh, so there's gonna be one here and one here. You're gonna kind of do a little diamond pattern, uh, but we need to take this 14 uh, millimeter nut off of the peg here and just make sure that you line up on those studs and that, as you can see, it doesn't move forward and backwards. So now I'll thread this uh, 14 millimeter nut on the back, tighten it down from the back side. So there you go, right peg mounted. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the number plate on and it's gonna be held on uh, by these uh, zip ties here. So I'm gonna kind of route the, um, yeah, cables behind the number plate, kind of get everything tidied up and put it on and I'll show you how I did it after I'm done. All right, so got the number plate on there. I actually really like it. It really does clean up the uh, front end. If you kind of look here, all the cables are tucked in nice behind it. I wanted to make sure I had enough slack in this thing. So whenever you turn the bars, you know, all the way from one side to the other, you don't have any binding or any issues uh, with not having enough slack in the brake line. All right, so got the battery here. If you press this button, you can see we actually already charge at 100%. So it charged from 70, what, 2% or so to 100 pretty quick. We're gonna go and drop the battery in the bike and get it plugged in. Now we're gonna go and drop the battery in the bike. Uh, again, just use your key on the other side here to unlock the battery um, cover. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we drop the battery in this way with the charging port to the left side of the bike. So go ahead and pull this thing up here. Make sure your cables are out of the way. There we go. So uh, right now you can see that the breaker switch is in the off position before you plug the battery in. Make sure it's off. Also, uh, if you look at here, there's a big diamond here, small diamond here. Want to make sure that you line it up properly. So you're going to go big, big to small, small to big, and it should go just in this boom clips in and then for uh, this deal here you have this uh, long open side here uh, and then you have this big long post here so you know make sure you go on just like that make sure you hear that click then once you've done that you can go back to your breaker switch turn that into the on position Notice the uh, terminal, uh, the battery display lights up here. Go ahead and close your battery box. Make sure that's all they cl close. Then you have your keys. Put the key in the bike, turn to the on position, and all the bike lights up. The screen lights up as well. Uh, it's in kilometers per hour. Uh, we will uh, go ahead and change that a little bit later. The bike is fully assembled. Can't wait to get out on this thing and rip around a little bit. Unfortunately, uh, it's been raining quite a bit here in Texas, so we're gonna have to wait till it dries out. But got a lot of big uh, content plans in store for the Suron. I'm gonna be doing um, you know, some ride videos, some trail riding. I'm gonna compare it to some of the dirt bikes I have, so I'm anxious to kind of see how it compares there. I know it's gonna lose out in some areas, but I think it actually might do uh, quite well in others. So stay tuned to my channel. If you aren't already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Drop a like on the video. That really helps me out. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the future.